What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video with me, Alex. Today we're going to talk about the 10 most surprising things about culture in Greenland. And I'm not talking about the most obvious ones like kayaking, dog sledding and building igloos because not everybody does that in today's modern society. So I want to look more into the more daily habits or traditions that we do have in the modern society of Greenland now. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get cracking with the video. So, but first of all, what is culture actually? A quick Google search told me that it is basically social norms and behaviors in societies around the world, as well as knowledge, beliefs and habits. So for my life in Greenland, here are the top 10 of the more surprising things that I have observed during my life up here on the big island. The first one being the Ayungila attitude. Which basically is the Hakuna Matata or no problemo life sentence that we like to throw out once in a while. And it can mean everything from Ayungila, let's bring that sucker on a hunting trip or Ayungila, we're gonna be two days delayed on the project or whatever endeavor that we are trying to accomplish. I believe the Ayungalak attitude has come from basically living up here. It is very weather dominant. So let's say planning some traveling from one town to another can be kind of difficult because the weather can come in and give you a storm in your face. So you just have to be prepared to accept the unforeseen. So it is a word used basically to accomplish all those unforeseen occurrences termed Ayungelat. Number two, hunting is sacred. Basically the 31st or 30th of July, I forgot if there's 31 in July, but basically the last day of July, everybody takes their boats and goes into the fjords or heads out in the night in order for them to be the first ones on the 1st of August to shoot the reindeer that the that's basically the hunting season it starts from the 1st of August so you want to be out first if you want to get a head start on your competition out there hunting being sacred up here also means that if your kid or whenever someone shoots their first reindeer they throw this huge coffee mic which we're going to be coming back to later on Basically inviting everybody over because their son or daughter shot their first reindeer, celebrating a big moment in that person's life, killing their first reindeer. I believe I was around 12 years old when I shot my first reindeer. The third one, Café Mik. It is basically a big celebration thing that you do for whenever you have, let's say, your birthday or marriage or first reindeer, you throw a Café Mik. A Café Mik basically very roughly translated means give me some coffee so it could be something like this hey coffee man and then you pour down the cup because you just said hey let's get some coffee or give me some coffee soccer and once you are in that coffee meek this thing is i guess you can't go to a coffee meek without seeing one of these type of coffees Araba coffee. Araba coffee, basically a pillar served at the coffee mic. This coffee is a uh, robusta, so strong that your heart will definitely increase 50%, and it is as dark as the 21st of December. So be aware, my viewers and friends. This thing is strong. Very strong. And don't forget to add the five mandatory tablespoons of sugar because that is also how you drink coffee. There you have it. Number four, people are very creative and a lot of people are very good at music. Music or art is almost second nature to a lot of people up here. Imagine this, going to an after party and there is a 99.95% chance of someone during that after party is gonna throw up their guitar and start playing an old folks valor or something crazy good music. Everybody is just good at music up here. I don't know what it is. So there you have it. People are very creative and good with music up here. House colors used to have a meaning back in the days. If you look around at any town in Greenland, you will see that houses are extremely colorful. And back in the days, it actually used to matter what type of color your house had. If we look away from the exclusive grayish looking buildings, which they're building a lot of there 
especially in Nuke. Kind of boring to look at if you ask me. But it actually used to distinguish which person or what type of occupation that person had judging from the color of their house. For example, the yellow houses used to be medical staff and then we had the blue ones used to be fishermen or people out on the sea. The red ones, I believe that was people from the trade, you know, trading goods back and forth. And of course the black ones, which was the popo or as they are called in real life, the police. Meat and fats is life. People eat meat, very simple. Not a whole lot of vegetarians up here, although they are coming. Coming from a hunter-gatherer background, eating meat has been essential for everyone living here in Greenland. And we didn't have a time to adjust to the farming culture before we became a modern society. So eating meat is what people do up here. We also enjoy the popular metdek once in a while, served with some soy sauce or some aumet for enhancing the flavors. And I can tell you it's a deadly combo if you combine it with Arabica fee. Basically a very strong diuretic once you hit the bathroom after your coffee meek. Just letting you know. Be aware if they try to serve you Medtech and Arabica coffee and you're not used to that. It could get pretty, pretty ugly. Number seven, people trust each other. There's a huge trust here in especially in the smaller towns. Just try to go to any smaller town than Nuuk, because here we don't really trust each other as we are growing larger and larger. But anyways, try to go to any smaller town in Greenland and ask how many people actually closes their front door or the car. And I'll bet you it would probably be less than 50% who actually closes their front door. Because why would you? You trust the people that hangs around in your hood. It does make kind of sense though that you would have to trust and believe in the person next to you because you never know who is going to save you once you're out in the stormy weather and your engine sets goodbye on your boat. It could be the person next to you who ended up saving your life out there in a life or death situation. Punctuality is not that high of a priority. I know some people do and some others, but we are talking generally. People in Greenland are not known for being the best timekeepers. Example of getting signatures for very important documents, it could prove a very, very difficult task, even though that they are important documents, you know? And that translates back into the, the Ayungela attitude. It's gonna be okay. Chill out. Everything is gonna be okay. Ayungela. And as I know, the term African time already has been taken. I think that we should invent a new term for Greenlandic time. Not being as extreme as the African time, but being somewhere in the middle of that. So if you ever come to Greenland, be prepared to be a little patient. Patience takes you a long way up here. People party late. Parties here usually starts as a home private party, starting around 8 to 9 p.m. at night, where people sit and drink some wine and drink some beer, whatever, drinks. And then usually around 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., people starts to hit the bars and stuff, which in my eyes is very late. One of the reasons is definitely that alcohol is very expensive actually just in the supermarkets. So buying it out in the bars is even more expensive. So it is one thing about, you know, saving some money. And the other thing is, I'm not really sure what the other thing is. It's just, yeah, too damn late. After parties is also a huge thing here, mostly in the smaller towns. I haven't been to that many after parties here in Nuuk, but usually in the smaller towns, you have a very big after party culture. And there's a 99.95% that someone is going to pick up a guitar and sing a song at that after party. So watch your girlfriend. Bringing us to the 10 and the last one, people and nature are more connected. People are more connected to nature than people from larger cities around the world, as weather usually has a direct impact of whether or not you're able to take the airplane from point A to point B, or take your boat into the fjord Friday evening when you're off and have planned the whole weekend to go in and enjoy your time in the fjord. Two, let's say for example in the summertime when children run around in the streets 2 a.m. in the morning because it's basically bright outside with the midnight sun. Also just the stories that we have from up here, one being the mother of the sea, which is basically a lady who lives under the water and her hair gets filtered whenever the Inuit people or whenever the people from the land 
choose to overfish the sea or do any other misdeeds. Her hair would get filtered and then basically trapping all the animals like the seal and the whales and all the other animals living in the sea, restricting them from going up and being able to be consumed by the people. But it just shows you that people here are very reliant on the nature in order to survive. Just look at our current economy. The largest export and what Greenland basically lives off of is fishing in the ocean. So we still depend on the nature and still like it very much. I like nature. Do you like nature? Give me a like if you like nature. And Araba Café. So that was a bit about Greenlandic culture. Hope you learned something from it. And now you finally understand why our houses have those weird colors. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you next time. Okay, bye.